Right, it's time for my first special guest now, and he's um, in America at the moment on the studio hotline. Um, he's uh, a member of the Matchstick Skeletons. Welcome to the show. How are you? Would you like to introduce yourself to uh, my listeners and uh, to the show? Uh, welcome. Yeah, hello. Um, my name is New. I'm the singer of the Matchstick Skeletons, um, coming at you from Los Angeles, California. Brilliant. Well, New... Hello and uh, welcome. And um, the Matchstick Skeletons, how, how did you kind of come up with the name? It's kind of a quirky and, well, name. Well, honestly, it's, a, it's an odd, making a band name is a weird thing. But back, like back in the day when you used to be able to play with matches in school, they people would like kids glue matches on a page and make little skeletons out yeah. of them. And I thought it was great that these kids might burn the school down. Yeah, that's cool, that is. Uh, you have a new track as well, which we'll talk about uh, very shortly. Uh, it's had over a quarter million streams uh, being played on airwaves all over the world. How does that feel when your song's played? Oh, dude, it's the best, man. It's, it is a song, like, we just love it, man. We believed in that song since we first wrote it. And so when, when it starts to get the traction that it does, uh, especially because we can't go on tour, right? When we go on tour, that song burns the house down yeah. every time. When we can't tour, it's like, just finding new people, getting to talk to you and, and meet people across yeah. the pond, man. Sure. I just hope it's up enough that we can go tour over there the second, you know, yeah. the plague's up. Sure. And um, your new single, um, what, what is it about? Um, told you so. Well, it's, man, I, I always find myself writing love songs. It's just not a happy one. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, when you tell someone something you know you tell them so um you yeah. tell some you tell someone something at first and they disbelieve you and it turns out you're right all along in the end yeah and yeah and it's like and people are always like well don't you shouldn't say i told you so and, and we think nah just say it <laughs> yeah true and um am i right you were uh, got quite dirty vocals on there the effects you use on on, on the vox uh kind of reminds me of a you know Maybe a bit of you too. They use like um, distorted vocals on like "Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kill Me, Kiss Me." That type of. Uh... Yeah, it's just a fun. It's a fun energy to bring to a song, right? Yeah. And I, I just like you know, the louder you get, the more it breaks up. Yeah. Uh, you know, in like in modern recording, and especially on like radio songs, like dynamics have kind of taken a back seat since like the yeah. 80s. You know. Yeah. So when you when you use distortion and things like that, it can kind of imply dynamics in a yeah. way that couldn't get spun if, if you produced it like it was a song from the yeah. 60s you know it's good because it catch it captures people's attention you know the effects you know and and the the extra kind of you know dynamic as you say and uh have you had a music video accompanied to the song yeah dude check it out if you go on youtube just yeah. look up told you so yeah. Most of yeah. yeah we had some fun mate it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever made in my whole yeah. life we had some laughs man it's like we were kind of trying to make like a B-horror Tarantino vibe. Yeah. It's a laugh. Dude. Yeah. Check it out. And the song itself, um, they say the perfect rock pop record's about 3.30 in length, particularly for radio. Um, yeah. do, you agree, do you agree with that? And is there a certain particular form formula to follow when deciding on how long a song is? Or do you just kind of go with the flow when you, you're writing a song? We, we, we do almost everything just off improvisation. Yeah. But we don't think too hard about it. If it lands in that length cool but like we're, we're not crafting the songs yeah. to be radio songs yeah uh, it's just like this one we said everything we had to say as loud and as boisterous as we wanted to and it happened to fit there and yeah so it made sense yeah. Single. yeah i mean i suppose when you look at some of the classic rock songs they're about a good five minutes in length anyway so oh dude think bohemian rhapsody yeah that was a hit yeah true. Like, what? <laughs> true. and um what what artists have inspired yourself over the years the big one on this is like, like Maddie and I, the, the drummer, him and I, we really connected over Prince. We were playing in a band and we would do all the night drives after gigs and we would just crush Prince yeah. as we would just drive through the night. Um, and so that kind of music uh, mixed with what we love about like the storytelling parts of rock and roll. So it's like, we kind of wanted to find a way that like, you felt the rhythmic elements of like Prince and Funkadelic and George, you know, uh, but with, with just like the parts of rock and roll that are like in our soul. Yeah. Um, and we told you so, especially once we found that, it felt like the band we've been trying to be since we were yeah. kids. And, and it's just felt natural, man. Like, it's the nice thing about it is this ain't like pulling teeth this easy and it's fun. Yeah. I remember uh, you just mentioned Prince. My first cassette uh, brought for me at Christmas was actually the Batman soundtrack. I remember putting it in a, a Fisher, nice. yeah, Fisher Price cassette player and I was about six and I whacked it up to the volume uh, and blasted that out my window since then. 
I haven't but looked back. To, I was born to DJ. Oh. Dude, that's perfect. That's the perfect. You guys, you seen there's a photo of Prince wearing roller skates and a Batman T-shirt? Yeah, it is unbelievable. That's the funniest photo I've ever yeah. seen. It's cool, that's isn't it? Fun. And uh, you mentioned the artists you've inspired. Um, what art, what artists have you toured with over the years? When you go on tour, like, man, we've had some fun. Uh, like not only with the skeletons, but like I've, I've toured with uh, Guns and Roses and Alice and Chains and the Glorious Sons and. Shania Twain, yeah. believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> so, man, I, like, I love being on the road. It's, it's my favorite thing. Uh, so, really, man, when I get an opportunity to tour with a band, especially a band that I love, yeah. Like, yeah. I know with Finger Eleven, and I'm like, the boys in those bands mean, mean a lot to me. They produce some of my records, yeah. and, and they're just beautiful people. And, and there's no bond like the bond bands make on tour. Yeah. It's just like, it's irreplaceable. Awesome. And um, pre COVID, what was it like going on tour? Did you have a bus and did you have a blast the time of your life? Oh my God, it was fun. We like we were on tour in February, man. So right before the wheels fell off, uh, we were out with the Glorious Sons. Um, we were doing LA to Denver with them. And it was some of the, like we had a gig in Seattle, man, that I'll remember for the rest of my yeah. life. Like it, it was just truly something magical. Uh, and yeah, it's like, I just love it. I miss it so much. But in the meantime, we made a record. Yeah. So we got, a, we got an LP coming out this year called Change the Channel. And, Whenever the plague's over, we're going back on the yeah. road. And I hope we'll over to England to see you. Yeah, we've all got our fingers crossed for all the artists around the world at the moment. Um, yeah, and if everything's everybody had the time to make yeah. something this year. So when it comes out, who knows? But like everyone I know has a record they're just waiting on. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. And yeah. like, can you imagine how fun it's going to be to go to a concert after this? I know. A lot of people want to let their hair down. And finally, uh, being a rock singer, do you have to take care of your voice? It's a delicate muscle, isn't it? Do you have to, you know, give it a rest sometimes, you know, uh, your voice? or um, Yeah, like I should. <laughs> I should, but I don't. Uh, I, I basically, like, I used to tour and I used to lose my voice all the time. Yeah. And I, and I tried to find someone to, to help me out there. And, and I found a couple coaches who were just like, you cannot sing like this seven days a week. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, you're not the teacher for me because I need to. And then I found someone who just kind of agreed, like, no, there is a, a balance of screaming like an idiot, whiskey, cigarettes, yeah. and technique. And with that, he'll be fine. Yeah. And so, honestly, I've been lucky that I've been more bulletproof now than I was as a youngster. And yeah. No, I do it right. That's good. Well, New, thank you very much from the Matchstick Skeletons talking about your hey, exciting man, band. Pre- it's a pleasure nice having, you, you. having you on. Nice chatting with you on the UK radio, man. Yeah, buddy. Come to L.A. Come say hey. You never know.